Your mom would. <laughs> that was super easy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> she would, though. Aww. 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 Here we go. The greatest guy in the history of Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> the end of his career might reflect his stand-up today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you finish that up. I'm not going to touch that. He's played we for 97 so different hockey teams. Woo! Jacques Lemaire loves this motherfucker. His name is Mark Parrish. Uh oh. This one better? Oh, how are we doing? Oh, hi guys. How are we doing? That was awesome. This is fucking terrifying. I mean, 20,000 in a rink, that's a piece of cake. You're just looking at a black puck and I can ignore you. You guys are just staring right in the eyes. And I, thanks. Hi, mom, dad. Mom and dad love you guys. See you guys in the front row here. You know, um, uh, not having a single bit of clue what I was going to do for this, I kind of just thought up some stories, and obviously you guys uh, would probably expect a couple of hockey stories. And uh, seeing how Tom Yo rubbed up the crowd, I think I can go a little filthy. Um, so I want to start off a little bit with when I was younger and I was a rookie in the NHL, and I had a couple of friends. And these friends wanted to steal Dino Cicerelli's nut cup. My first two memories of friends coming down to visit me and as a rookie weren't scoring goals. There was protecting Dino Cicerelli's nut cup and my other buddy Bales <laughs> sniffing Pavel Burry, swearing he could smell Anna Kornikova. <laughs> too much? Too much? All right. I'll, you know what? I'll take it back here. Let's take, let's, uh, you know what? I want to talk about something that's important to me. Let's talk about rehab. That'll be a little bit easier, won't it? I think it's an important subject. I think mental health is something that doesn't get discussed enough. There's a stigma to it. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm an alcoholic and I'm an addict. Thank you. Rehab, man. Re rehab is a trip. Um, you know, going in, uh, I had no idea what it was going to be like. In my head, I had this picture of, of this, you know, the black and white movies where you're just standing in a robe, just slowly walking up, drooling to get your little cup of pills, just sitting there, just completely doing nothing, staring at a blank TV. And holy hell, it was a lot of fun. We had a ton of fun in rehab. There was laughter and there was a lot of bad jokes. And that's some of them you'll hear tonight. But no. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't believe when I got there how good the people were. There were, there were grandmas, grandpas, uh, you know, you can imagine lawyers, doctors, everyone on this earth that are good people that, that are just stuck with a horrible disease trying to fight their way through it. And you get split up into these family groups. First things first, you get split up into a family group. My family group was the red group. We like to call ourselves the alpha males. We were, you know, we were the professionals. We, we, were, we, did, we were successful. We had everything going. Just to find out later that we were truly titled the narcissistic and entitled group. <laughs> I think that fit pretty well, actually. That fit really, really well. And as, as we're going through, as, as we go through, uh, excuse me, rehab, it's, it's kind of like jail. We kind of, we called ourselves the inmates because the only thing you could trade in there is cigarettes. That's the only thing they allowed was cigarettes. So you smuggled in Starbucks coffee. We got half caffeinated coffee until 8 a.m. Half caffeinated coffee until 8 a.m. We're a bunch of addicts. And you're giving us half caffeinated coffee? Sugar was anything. The meth heads would do anything for a packet of honey. It was absolutely incredible. You could get them to do anything. And that was the, that was the way you got around. You, got, you went and hung out and I didn't smoke, but I think I smoked a couple packs just hanging out by the smoking section because that's where everybody was. If you wanted to talk to people, that's where you went. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right. And then as you go in through rehab, you start to tell your story. That's one of the first things when you get split up into the groups, you start to tell your story. And these stories are horrible. This is, it's your childhood, zero to 17 years old, and you got to tell everything that's happening. And you hear some horrible stories from people, and they, they grow up abused physically, mentally, all these things, just all the way down the line. And you've got to tell your story in front of this whole group, in front of a dozen guys you don't have a clue of, 
all, of course, fighting for the same thing. <sighs> Got to my turn. After everybody's talking about, oh, my uncle did this to me, did that to me. Mark, will you tell your story, please? No. Mm -mm. Mark, come on, everybody's telling a story. No, I don't, I don't want to tell my story. I was perfect. I had awesome parents. My brother's still my best friends. My parents still support me to this day. It was incredible. I've never been so embarrassed in my life to talk about my family. There was a guy in there that was just explaining how his mom killed his stepfather and tried to kill him. And then I'm supposed to sit there and be like, yeah, my mom and dad are awesome. They've been to me right along. It was absolutely a horrifying, horrifying scenario. But man, it's, it's something that you can really take pleasure in as you go through it. I just wanted to talk about it, to be honest with you. I wasn't sure about the comedy, but I really wanted to come up here and talk about some stuff and get this, end this stigma. <laughs> Mental health is very, very important. I was there with brain trauma. There's a lot of people going through some bad, bad things and they need some help. And thank you all. You guys have all been so much. You've helped me so much along the way. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Mom, Dad, I love you. Power trip, boys. I'm sorry I went sentimental, but I had to. You guys have meant too much to me for the past year. I love you guys. Thank you all. Nikki, I love you, sweetheart. Thank you very much. Mark Parrish! Sasha, Sasha's pointed off off stage. Nothing like having a guy that just went through rehab perform in a pile of beer. <laughs> Way to just go, Tommy. The smell. Way to go, Tio.